What's up ladies and gentlemen, and hopefully you can hear me over heart sock talking. For some reason, there's no way to turn the volume down for this game, so I'm gonna have to edit that in post or just talk very, very loud. This is Brothers in Arms, Earned in Blood. I hope I said the right name. Is this Earned in Blood? I think this is Earned in Blood. Yeah, Brothers in Arms earned in blood. I'm not sure. I always get confused between the two. So anyway, this is the sequel to Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30. Now, I've actually had a request to play this game uh, as a let's play, start to finish. I'm still probably going to do that. But uh, for now, this is just a short review of the game before I play it. So anyway, if you haven't played Road to Hill 30, uh, you should do before playing this game. Because this game actually picks up from where Road to Hill 30 left off. Whoa, that guy just came charging in. This game is really loud at the moment. But uh, anyway, I can always edit that. So anyway, this game picks up from where... Road Hill 30 left off and in this game you don't actually play as Sergeant Baker anymore you play as now newly promoted Sergeant Hartsock who in Road Hill 30 was still just a corporal alright I'm playing the game so anyway uh, best fucking sequel set up to anything I've ever seen you know rather than playing like a new character or the same old character, I'm gonna have to turn this down. Oh shit, I just knocked shit all over the place. Rather than playing like a new character or the same old character, they were like, fuck that shit. Playing one of the original characters from like his point of view, and the first few chapters, I'm like, on like chapter four, I think, or something. I don't know, I'm picking up halfway through the, uh, the game anyway. Um, but anyway, the like first couple of missions are actually. Uh, missions from Rotil 30 but in the perspective of Heartsock so like what he was doing while you were doing the main missions uh, when you played Rotil 30 as Baker anyway all shit's kicking off right now so yeah that's when the game starts from and you actually are talking to Eisenhower uh, if you remember at the end of Rotil 30 Star Stars was like, oh, and there's Eisenhower's here to interview some of you. And, well, one of them turned out to be Red. Everybody's getting fucking shot up at the moment because of them bastards over there. This game's made by Ubisoft, by the way. It's like, what the hell do they do now? Fucking Assassin's Creed? Hmm. How original. <laughs> when was the last time you heard of Ubisoft making anything other than fucking Assassin's Creed games? They used to make cool stuff, like this game. I've never played another game, another uh, Second World War game. At least it's anywhere even close to the way Brothers in Arms has been made. It's fucking genius, and for fucking PS2 era, that shit was amazing. I'd like to point out as well that the advertisement for this game was just incredible. Like everywhere you looked. Either th this game was advertised. Um, I don't think. Oh shit, that was the wrong fucking button to press. I don't think uh, Road Till 30 was quite as advertised, but Jesus Christ, when this game was coming out, it was fucking everywhere. Like, you couldn't turn on your TV without, you know, no matter what channel you were watching, there'd be an advert for Brothers in Arms. Even though it's an 18 game, it was still like on kids' channels. So, basically, in terms of the gameplay, it's exactly the same as Road Till 30. You still command the troops in the same way. Because I think this came out like a few, maybe a month or a, a few after uh, Road Till 30 did. So they they kept the like they kept the whole theme running basically. That was a bit of a shame. I wanted the grenade to kill him. Never mind. But anyway, as I was saying. What was I saying? I don't remember. Yeah, the the whole gameplay mechanics and everything are still the same as they were in Road Till 30. Uh, if you don't know what they are, basically it's f a first-person shooter combined like troop control strategy, I guess. But uh, that actually fucking works to an extent. Anyway, you tell your troops where to go. You have two fire teams, and hopefully they gen genuinely go 
where they're supposed to go. But uh, sometimes they don't, and that's when they all get shot to shit. And uh, these little circle things, uh, sorry for anyone who like knows this shit, and it's like, oh my god, I know, I played the game when I was fucking eight, I don't need to know this shit. Anyway, I'll point out for the sake of those who don't, this game, uh, as well as being able to command your troops to move to locations, uses a suppression system. Something I have never, ever, ever seen in another game since. Okay? It's genius because of how simple it is. Ow. And also how realistic it, realistic it is. Basically, these circles indicate how suppressed the enemy is. And right now, they're all goddamn red, which means they're not suppressed at all. And they're able to fire on me. But the more fire you're able to put down on the enemy, see, that one's gone to grey. They're now suppressed. They're not going to fire back at me. Uh, well, they will do eventually once they recover from it. But right now they're suppressed, so they're not going to be returning fire. Whereas them dick fucks next to them uh, are still firing at me. So that's basically the mechanic of the, the whole combat system. As well as this thing, uh, which is really useful. This is where the whole kind of strategy thing comes into it. You can use this ability you have to kind of survey the situation and I don't even really see this as cheating because you know yeah it lets you show up where the enemy are but like if you had if you were in a firefight and you had like a map or something you could be like okay there's a hedgerow over there maybe we can get round it and fucking flank them or whatever you know and it only shows up enemies that you've detected it doesn't show up like every single one in the whole fucking map but yeah, they have this suppression system, which then brings in the actual ability to flank, which I'm kind of failing at the moment. You're meant to use both fire teams. I normally just, like, go around the flank on my own because, I don't know, I'm less likely to do something stupid and get killed. But let's bring them up here anyway and see if we can do some more damage from up here. I'm surprised that... Oh, God, they're fucking firing at us. Stop. Go away. Stop shooting at me. Put fucking fire on them, dudes. So, yeah. That actually brings in the ability to flank effectively. Uh, which, again, don't often see that in games anymore with, like, AI, if you know what I mean. Like, a single-player game now, rarely would you ever see something as intricate as, like, you know, flanking manoeuvres and shit. Normally, the AI is just, like, on a set path and just, you know goes to cover and then does a bit of shooting but doesn't really do much because the AI is programmed for the player to do stuff. In this game, the AI ain't programmed to do shit. You've got to tell it what to do. It will do what you tell it, but it ain't just going to go on its own merry fucking way. You actually have to tell it to do things like move to position, shoot at these guys, shoot at those guys, do this, do that, do the other, you know. And occasionally, you can easily fuck it up, which, you know, is really easy to do. You can send your guys the wrong way, they'll get caught in a crossfire sign. I'm, like, going on a suicide run right now. And, you know, your whole fire team, both fire teams can get murdered, like, in seconds. Alright, let's try this whole grenade thing again. Oh, oh, let's gobble them up. Oh, got one of them. Either that or it was just a corpse flipping over, I don't know, but anyway... One down. Oh, those guys are fucked. Hang on. Someone shoot at them. There we go. Oh, yeah. Dunskies. And uh, something else as well. The Like I was saying, the AI isn't programmed to do shit. The fucking enemy AI is programmed to fucking kill you. That is all they're programmed to do. And that's all they want to do is kill you and your entire team. Unlike... In another World War II game I've been playing recently, which is, um, uh, Stupid Game McGee, whatever it's called. What's that fucking game called? Enemy Front, that's it. What other gun do I have? How do I even swap? Swap weapon. Swap weapon. I have another gun, because... Maybe I don't have another gun. Hold on, what's the goddamn weapon swap button in this? I'm actually... What is it? Movement... Uh, up, down, left, right. It doesn't even say. Oh, hang on. 
Switch weapon. Tab. Oh, that's why I can't. Oh, well, that might have been useful earlier. Never mind. So anyway, like I was saying, the AI, the enemy AI at least, is programmed to murder you. And like I was saying, in another game I've been playing, Enemy Front, where the goddamn enemies don't even take cover properly. Like, like right there, I threw the grenade in. All three of them were like, shit. Try to get out of the hole. We're still putting down fire. I even nearly got hit there. That's goddamn amazing. Enemy front, they're like, stick their head up above this hole. Probably about, oh god, I'm still taking fire. Jesus Christ. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. That's bad. Um, you know, Take and just bloody, like, expect to get hit by you. This game, hell no. They take cover, cover hardcore. These guys aren't taking cover very well, but, you know, they're still shooting at me. Alright, let's swap back to the BAR. That's working a lot better. So, as well as that, the realism of this game is fucking unmatchable. Um, just, you know, it, weapon physics, you know, the, the, like right now where I've been running about, it's moving a little bit, but uh, the longer you aim or the longer you sit still, the less it will get, like your breathing will stop and things. Uh, you don't heal unless you fuck up loads and loads of times and then it says okay you seriously don't know how to play like and it gives you the option like do you want to heal yes or no uh, there's no rechargeable health bullshit it's just you know hardcore gritty fucking gameplay which unfortunately a lot of top tier games today just don't you know just don't match. They don't match this level of realism in any way. Which is a goddamn shame because this is amazing. And I'm not just saying that because I like the game. Like I played Road Till 30 when I was young because it was like one of the few games I actually had on PS2. And like but I never even played this this one until like a few months ago. Uh, after I finished my Road Till 30 Let's Play on my channel. So yeah. Oh god, no, no, no. So I'm not just saying like, oh yeah, it's good because I played the original and it's like nostalgia or shit. I never even played this until a few months back. So, you know, all my criticisms and uh, positive c uh, criticisms, I guess, are, uh, are legit. Like, they're here and now. This is not what I was thinking however many years ago when I first played it. It's what I was thinking however many months ago when I played it. Target them. Okay, okay. Alright. Trying to think of other things to think about. So what have I said about? I said about AI, uh, weapon physics in general, uh, difficulty as well, pretty damn hard game. You know, there's some areas later on where they start throwing in tanks and shit, and it, they're all hell's breaking loose when they start using the tanks. Uh, you know, machine gun emplacements, tactically placed. Map layouts as well are absolutely brilliant. Wow, he dodge that pretty easily. Come on, stick your head back up, you knob. Stick your head up. Stick your head up. Pretend you're in a different game that's not as good as this one. Uh, map layouts as well are fantastic. They're kind of linear, but it's kind of like, okay, you cleared this sector, now move on to that sector. And they're quite open-ended. Uh, there's more than one way to, like, over, you know, win the firefight or complete the objective or, you know, just do whatever. So, you know, Map layouts are fucking perfect. Okay, and the story as well is really great. Um, I won't spoil anything, and but uh, you know the story of this Brothers in Arms is just as good as Road Hill 30. There's just as much pressure and drama as there was in the first one. I don't really know if there's much drama, but people were getting killed. Uh, I will say though one thing, the, the kind of character, this guy is not giving up his position no matter what. Oh, now they're dropping mortars on me. See, everything just took a turn for the worst and they just bombed their own guy. Okay, these guys mean business. So, anyway. Oh, now they're throwing mortars at me. Guess I could have talked about the mortars, but anyway. Uh, one thing I will say, the characters in this one, I don't feel were as well delivered as uh, as Road Till 30. You, you don't quite feel the same connection 
to the characters in this game that you did in Road Hill 30. Mainly, I guess, because they're like new characters and shit. There's a sniper rifle there, and I'm taking it. Yeah. Woo! K98 rifle. Can I open this? What have I not done? Oh, shit. I haven't completed the objective. Though, I was meant to, I was meant to put smoke on the... On the goddamn... Uh, package drops, wherever they are. The supply drops. So I'm going to go and do that now. Anyway. That's my only real criticism. Is There's a lot of kind of new characters introduced. And they just didn't really... Um, you know, sell the characters quite as well as they did in Road Till 30. I, I felt more of a personal connection. If you can kind of say that. To the characters in Road Till 30. Especially when they got killed. It was like heartbreaking. But... In this one, it's kind of like, oh, okay, I guess he's died. Uh, is he going to come back in the next level? I don't know. But anyway. I guess I can round it up here before I... I or else I might as well just play the whole damn level, and I'm not doing that. Uh, not today, anyway, but I will probably do a full playthrough at some point in this game, because it's fucking amazing. Where's the third one? Oh, it's over there. Right where they're dropping the mortars. So anyway, as a final verdict for Brothers in Arms, Earned in Blood, I got the name right, is a 9 out of 10. It's fucking brilliant. Has great replayability. Uh, I think there's even more features in this than just uh, the kind of single player and the net play, which, who the hell had PS2 Live back in the day? Not me, that's for sure. So yeah, 9 out of 10. Would be a 10 out of 10. If the characters were a little bit more memorable, like I don't even know the I know the ones from Road Till 30. Like I know every fucking character from Road Till 30, but this game eh, not so much. But anyway, yeah, that's my review of the sequel to Brothers in Arms Road Till 30. Cheers for watching. Uh, I'll see you again soon. Okay, thanks. Bye.